This is a deep dive into how the Vercel chat UI works and their chat helpers. This lets us do cool things like embed interactive widgets inside chat dialogues. So this is primarily described in this docs page, chatbot tool usage with use chat and stream text, which is two of their helpers. You can use tools in your chatbot application. The AI SDK supports three types of tools in this context. One, automatically executed server side tools, two, automatically executed client side tools, three, tools that require user interface interaction, such as confirmation dialogues. So this is described in this flow. And as I went through this and went through my debugger to see how it worked, there were some surprises and things I didn't quite understand. And it turns out there's actually a lot going on under the hood. They try to capture this or encapsulate it in these nice helpers, and they do a pretty good job for the most part, but there are some situations where you're going to want to know what's actually happening. So with that said, I'm going to go to this application I'm building and do their classic example of, so where we stand now, this is a chat, this is an application that I'm building. Into this application, I put their example of the weather, the weather sample code. This code is actually given on this page right here. So I more or less just put in this code into my existing application. And in order to have a really effective demo, it would be great if somebody or I in the future would take this code and put it into a sandbox of some sort so everybody can just play with it. But for now, it's in this application. And so I will go through and just show what's happening here. There are three tools, get server side tool with execute function client-side tool that starts with user interaction and client-side tool that is automatically executed on the client. So we have get weather, ask for confirmation, and get location. The idea is when we, the user asks to get weather in their location, the LLM knows to ask for confirmation and then automatically calls the get location and then automatically calls get weather information. So there's a user interaction step and then it subsequently calls these other tools automatically. All right, so I'm starting my debugger so we can see what's going on the server. And I have a few debugger commands here along with some probably useless comments, but it will hopefully serve the purpose. All right, so let's go to our application and take a look at, actually I'm gonna refresh so I have a fresh start. Okay, so let's go into the application and ask what is the weather in my current location? So that, per its instructions, is going to ask for my permission in order to get my location. So we first see, obviously it's hitting our server endpoint here. This is a next application, so it hits a route. And in that, we have the stream text call as described in the docs, and we have a messages, messages parameter, which is a handy thing to look at. Let's take a look here. I will continue the breakpoint. So obviously that hits the route, and then we have a response from our, from our route. And we see here, this is a streaming call, by the way, so it's a little, Kludgy, these aren't broken down into nice clean JSON objects, but you can see here is that the finished reason was tool calls. And that, in fact, I'm gonna pull up my, my other tools here so you, we can inspect what's going on. I debug console, strained response. Okay, so we have here, the tool asked for permission message for user. And this is the first little kind of gotcha I want to describe because in the docs, they have this parameter is just message. And it's not permission message for user, which I very verbosely described here. And it's important to know that this is a parameter to the tool you're passing. It's not like some message parameter exists on tools. This is an arbitrarily named parameter. And so the language model is ending this call because it wants to call a tool on the client. And the, one of the arguments for the language model to fill out was what's the permission message we want the user to see. So there we are, it asked for that. And the cool tool that was being called is ask for confirmation. <clears throat> and let's go ahead and continue and see what happens on the client. So here we have the first point where we enter the client code. That is in the use chat callback in the very top of the hook. So when you're doing your use chat hook and you're importing these various utility functions, you can pass this argument calls on tool call. So this is described in the docs as well on tool call as the place where you put things that do not require any user interactions. You can get all sorts of data from the client. 
there's with interaction. Here we go. Run tool side, run client side tools that are automatically executed. So here we are at that breakpoint. This is pretty obvious so far. So I have in here a state variable for the client state, whether they've agreed to give the location or not. And that's what we see at this checkboxes up here. So right now we have not agreed to give the location. So note that we're not returning anything. There, there is no result from this tool call yet. So I'll continue the debugger. And on the client, we find our next breakpoint, which is in the code onto the rendering of the user interface. And so this is, we're just looping through the messages here, the messages that are returned from the use hook, use chat hook. And in those messages is a tool invocations array. So we're just looping through that and we're finding that we invoke the tool called ask for confirmation. Again, pretty obvious. So now we get to this thing called a result. And so the result is empty but the result is just whatever the result of that tool call was. Right now, with the language model threw us the code and is expecting us to give that tool call a result. And so we have nothing yet. We have, we have no yes, it's undefined. And so we're going to render a component here. Now, one thing to keep in mind, notice I'm stepping through here. This is a React component. And as it receives other updates to the props or from our global state, then it's going to re-render. So use your use memo or whatnot appropriately. There are and can be infinite loops. Okay, here we have this. And we have the ability to now add a tool result through this interactive component. So I'm going to hit yes and watch carefully what happens here. Two things simultaneously. There's two things that happen. The first, which quickly flashed on the screen, is that it instantly updated the client and we now have a result on the client. <clears throat> Result is yes. So it optimistically on the client side state updated with the tool result, but it simultaneously fired the chat request. So now we have this tool result coming in and it's a, I think it's interesting here how this is displayed and that we have, it's not a, a new message. It's not like we submitted another chat message. We actually went into the tool call that we were given and we now filled in this result variable here is all that happened. So it's the same message, same tool call. We just populated the result field. So if you're counting messages and wondering where the back and forth all went, they're actually embedded in the state of the tool messages. So we'll go ahead and continue this call here. It should now have seen the result of that as a successful acceptance that you can check our location and the language model knows to go to the next tool. We'll just double check this. So we have the now we have a tool call, which is get location. So we now have that. Please share your location so I can provide the weather. Okay, so now we have our next tool call here that the language model wants us to perform. So let me go back to the client and go ahead and step through here. Now what's cool is that query took a long time. Our state could still be updated and you could see, I'll just go quickly through here. You can see that we could have updated the state right away. And that's nice because your server might be working on something that takes a lot longer. And then of course the, the UI state is optimi optimistically loading, you have a nice user experience and so forth. So now we have the second now tool call coming down. So we've been asked to call the get location. So again, this is in the on tool call. This is in the use chat section where the interactions can happen with no user input. So now I don't have anything returned here. So let's continue on. We could just return the result right from here and give it right back to the server, but we're not going to do that. We're going to render another user interface. Here we are, by the way, we, since we reset state, we're re-rendering the ask for confirmation component again, rendering it again. Okay, now we get to the rendering of the location component. Let's go ahead and let that render, and we'll go ahead and click a location here. Again, state client state optimistically loads, server call is made. We have in the server messages, Again, we have the same message call. This was very confusing to me at first. We have the same message call, but we appended another tool invocation to the same message. And it followed that similar pattern where we just populated the result. So we have assistant message, tool invocations, and let's look at the second item in here. So we have the result is New York. So that's now my location. The language model has successfully accomplished two calls automatically. Now, <clears throat> one thing that's interesting, it now has everything it knows. The language model knows it has permission, it has location. It has another tool now that can execute on the server, which is to actually get the weather. And because we have this max steps on the server set as a 
as more than one, which it is by default, it does not automatically do its own consecutive calls to tools. It will automatically call a server side function to get the weather. Note that it did not go back to the client. It just automatically went to the language model, the, server res the language model responded to the server, and the server executed the next tool call automatically because we have that max steps value set. So now we have executed that tool as well. We have now a third tool that was executed. And let's go back to the client. We'll go back here. We've optimistically loaded the state. We've now, actually, I'll go ahead and continue going through that. We'll look at the this in a second here. So the tool that I just called, the weather tool, I have a delay in here. Oh, I do have a delay, but it looks like, let's just take a look at what we have here in the stream response. Stream response. Okay, so we have now, oh yeah, we have the weather results. Okay, and there is a delay in that execute tool, by the way, I think you probably noticed the promise. That's nice because it's good to see what the loading states look like. It's nice, this optimistic UI state is really cool because you can do something that takes a while on the server and actually load the loading state for that. So in our case, we'll just continue because we now have the results of the weather call. And on and now we have on client tool call weather. So I don't have a breakpoint earlier, but now in the let's see, I'll go back to the actual widget here in the tool call weather, which is client tool call weather. Let's see if I can remember the name of this. There it is on client. Okay, so this is what's going on here. So that's right. So we have the use chat and I have a callback that I just I put here experimentally. Oh, that's right. So as an experimental, like an architectural point, I just combined the no user interaction code with the act of displaying the weather with the actual user interaction react component. So this anyway, take this or leave it, but the, but know that we right now just hit the initial entry point of calling the weather tool, which is in the on tool call hook. And now we're going to render it after we render our other components. Okay, we're loading weather data. That's a nice loading state there. And now we have our current weather. Now, the other thing, just take note, is watch what happens here. I'll go through here. And we're streaming in the content. And so on every stream, it's re-rendering. And just be mindful of that when you're re-rendering your components inside these chat messages. You want to have them in their own component, or wrap them in use memo, and just plan accordingly. So I'll just go ahead and continue that. And with that said, that's a relatively complete demo. I'm going to reset this now though, and just go through one more time. And we'll leave the debugger on the server on. I'll clear this and we'll leave this check mark set there. So now the state on the client is automatically approved to agree to give the location. So now note in the use on tool call that we put as a parameter in the use chat hook, we have this ask for confirmation. And if we've agreed to give the location already, which is what this checkbox sets, we return yes automatically. And this is pretty cool because let's ask for the same thing, weather in my location. And look, so we go right to the server as we did before. It's going to ask for the tool call as it did before. And look at that, it actually went, I disabled the debugger on the client but it went right back and it automatically put the result to the tool and then it sent it right back to the server. Again, no use, no interaction on the client necessary. So let's just take a look at the tool result here. State, args, and look at that. There's my result, yes, returned without me doing a thing. And the reason is because in my section here where I am no input required section, we just returned yes. And that's why I just went and did the round trip. So let's continue. And we'll go ahead and continue that. I'm going to now pause the breakpoints here because that's mainly what I wanted to show. Let's see, it's hidden by my screen here. Okay, so let's take a look here. We'll pick the location. Whoops, obviously didn't pause all the breakpoints. All right, let's see if that works. No. <laughs> Okay, so we call the weather tool and 
And there we are. So then we're streaming in the response here. All right, so the last thing we will do is I would like to demo this without any breakpoints at all. I'm just going to disconnect my debugger entirely for right now. And let's see here, where is my eject bar? There it is. So we'll de disconnect both of my next debuggers here. And I will one more time go through this. And a little variation there to mix it up. We already answered yes earlier. That state has been set. We pick the location. We have a nice loading state while it's getting the weather, which is set to about two to four seconds. And then we have a nice answer. So it happens so fast. And when you first see the docs, it looks, it, it and it really is magical. I'm really happy with what Vercel did, but there's a lot going on under the hood. And I think it helps to know all these steps on when the re-renders happen, where it's actually storing these tool calls, where it's storing the results, and all of the places where you can intercept and inject some kind of a user action. So hopefully that is helpful.